My name is Arawan Dong Pakdi. I am an associate professor in charge as a director in Native Honeybees and Pollinator Research Center of King Mungkut University of Technology Tonbury or KMUTT. Our lab has a nickname called Bee Park. This lab is all about a research and extension into a tropical bees. We actually a group who are working together in multidisciplinary approach. I've been working with, with bees or native bee more than 20 years. Bees like a very essential and very beneficial um, living organisms. So they are, uh, first place I am attracted uh, to the bees by their communication. They have, the, they, they are only insects where they uh, can communicate through a symbolic um, language. They are a key pollinator to the um, ecosystem. So um, somehow that I connected to the bee because I admire them as a highly essential um, living organism. They're very versatile. In case of the honeybees and stingless bee, I think because they are highly effective um, um, animal. They live together, they work together as a whole. So what they do is very effective, is highly effective. And they're also highly diverse, like uh, from a small site to a big site. And, and um, the habitat that they live is a uh, ranks from a virgin forest until um, um, to our backyard, for example. So they live everywhere. Pollinator is very important. Number one is to maintain biodiversity. As a pollinator, they uh, transfer a genetic between a tree. So uh, they uh, maintain and they um, strengthen uh, biodiversity in the natural habitat. Uh, number two, I think, um, to restore a biodiversity in a disturbed area or in the um, ecological um, restoration. Um, it's, it's 10 times faster with bees compared to without bees. Uh, number three, I think it's, it's um, the, the pollinator uh, helping human society by strengthening uh, food security. As you know, the pollinator helps to increase a yield of food crops. So um, I think this is the, the, the three main um, roles of pollinators. Honey is uh, a superfood. They are always a recipe uh, in a medicine and, and a, a special food uh, since a long time ago, like uh, uh, 10,000 years ago. The, um, the honey is a superfood because they comprise with functional property. For example, they had a very high antioxidants anti-inflammatory, um, uh, the um, anti-cancer, and it's also um, the um, detoxification abilities. We had tested more than 50 samples of honey, which collect from native honeybees, stingless bee, the European honeybees, and the famous honey that import in Thailand. So the result that we had found is that um, the native Honey, let it be honey, is always fall into a top quality. A lot of people is underrate the tropical honeys. They just see it's like a sweet net. They don't look at it as a functional property. The sustainable honey production is very important. We have to remark this. But first of all, sustainable honey production compared with two things. The first thing is about to building up a bee sanctuary or a landscape where there's a lot of bee flora, which is clean from a harmful chemical and, poli uh, and pollution. And the second thing is about a non-destructive honey harvest. So um, bees is like all the other uh, living organisms that they need a living material for themselves. So um, uh, when we harvest honeys, uh, do not take or the brood, or the, do not take the brood or the young larvae without a reason, because a brood will become a next generation worker bees. And then uh, always leave at least 30% of honey to the colony when we collect honey, because 
the whole colony will be die within 24 hours uh, if the last drop of honey has been used. In Asia, we had 10 honeybee species of 11 total uh, honeybee of this world. In Thailand, we had four native honeybee species. One species is, uh, is already um, like extinct from some, some area. So now we have three and uh, we have Epistosata, which is, is not easy to, to uh, work with because they are very giant, very giant and dangerous. So we work now with two species. The first one is the Asian cavity nesting bees, the Epistosata. They live in a cavity uh, with the multiple comb. So this species we can put in the box and they live everywhere in Thailand. They are very well adapted. The second species that we work with is uh, the Episphoria, which is a droppy, a small one, um, building a nest uh, uh, in the tree branches in the bush. They like to hide in, uh, under the bush because they are a small bee. But even they're small bee, but they are well adapted to many kinds or various habitats. And then we work with a stingless bee. Stingless bee in Asia, it's take about 70 to 80 species, but it's only 10 species which is we utilize in the farming. So uh, we work with like four um, species of stingless bee. The native bee, they adapt themselves. They try so hard to adapt themselves to, to live with us, like near nearby human community. Um, as I said, the changing of the um, landscape, the changing of the forest to be agricultural area, to be an herbal area, this is a, a, a main threat already to, to the, the bees uh, because they're losing their natural habitat. But bees are still that they're trying to adapt themselves to stay under that, that threat. Pesticides always come with the uh, come with the agricultures. So if the losing habitat uh, will be a first disaster for native bees, the pesticide will be a second disaster. It's like a final nail to the coffin, you know, because uh, they tried so hard already and they left the fuel already because of losing the habitat. If you're using a pesticide, pesticide will kill all the colony. So um, using pesticide will kill uh, native bees, uh, in the area within a few years, it will extinct from the areas. Bee Park has available um, research knowledge about a native beekeeping. Um, we call bee science technology, which is a technology where, uh, where we do a small scale beekeeping with a native honeybees and stingless bee. The small scale beekeepings can apply or can implement in a small area or the fragmented area. So um, the technology that we have now is can be implemented in um, a various type of uh, habitat. Because South Asia is a biodiversity hotspot. So people live careless to, to all the living organism. So they take more than gifts. Um, so I think the, the, high, the, the biggest challenge in this is about the awareness. Doing a small scale beekeeping with native bee is the thing that you can start easily and start small in your own area. Through this, if, if everyone, if this explains to many uh, households, everyone have at least one colony in the colony, uh, it will help to build up the um, bee population in, in the area too. So please be friendly to the bees <laughs> and um, then we will leave uh, harmony to the natures. <laughs> <laughs>